going against a very experienced wrestler from North Miami and Gideon. Uh, Gideon was actually the runner-up in the T Three Rivers Conference last year at 106 pounds, the very same weight class. So he's a favorite to win this year, the conference. So we had an early takedown by Gideon, and he lets Steven up, and they're both neutral. Gideon has a record of two and, I'm sorry, 10 and two this year in their early season. They've wrestled 12 different matches already to Rochester's five. This is Rochester's first match again, like I said earlier, since the weekend before Thanksgiving. Another quick slide by takedown by Gideon, putting him up six to two. 20 seconds to go. Rochester brings a pretty senior dominated team to uh, the sport this year. Uh, boys have worked a lot of off season hours and getting really good at this sport and they have actually qualified for what we call the Coaches Association State Duels coming in January held in Muncie where only 12 schools from three different classes uh, get that opportunity to, to wrestle for a, a coach's state title. Uh, IHSA does their team state title a little differently. Um, they use your individual performances at the state tournament, individual state tournament, and they score it kind of like a normal tournament that we will host here, such as the John McKee. However, it's done on the state level. So it, l truly, you could have a state championship team with four kids qualifying for state and all four doing very well. Um, the Coaches Association thought that they would try this uh, format and see how it does, and this will be the third year that they've done it, and Rochester's qualified this year, narrowly missing out last year qualifying for the team duels. So we're going into the second period. Gideon has a very comfortable lead of 9-2, to two, and uh, he's working on uh, riding a leg and, and trying to get a turn here on, on the inexperienced or lesser experienced Steven Duca. He finally cuts him to let him go for one escape to start from their feet and work for another takedown. And wrestling is a little unique in most sports because you're actually wrestling for yourself, but yet you're also scoring points for your team. And um, many of you know how team scoring is scored, but I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, if you defeat your opponent by one to seven points, you win what we call a decision and, and score three points for the team. If you win by eight to 14 points, it's called a major decision and you score four points for the team. If you happen to uh, score, get a 15 point lead or more, the, the match is automatically stopped and it's considered a technical fall and you will score five points for your team. And the ultimate is to score six points by pinning your opponent's shoulders down to the mat for a two count. Gideon's got a chicken wing, double chicken wing, no, just a si single chicken wing, and uh, has Steven's shoulders exposed to the mat. Referee is doing a count. And how you score back points in the individual match is you expose your opponent's shoulders to the mat at at least a 45 degree angle to the mat, and the referee will start counting. If he gets a two count, you would get in two point near fall, but if he counts all the way to five, you can get a three, pull, three point near fall. So Gideon here will score three points as the second period runs out. He is now up 14 to three. Wrestlers start neutral here into the third period. Stevens continuing to attack. Tried for a little outside ankle pick and missed it. Oh, and he lost the balance and, and Gideon capitalizes for a takedown. He's up 16 to three. North Miami comes into our duel with a dual meet record of eight and four. And as I said before, Rochester has wrestled one time up at South Bend Clay against five opponents and, and have come out undefeated with five and zero. Oh. Currently, of those eight wins, North Miami has defeated three other TRC opponents, and those opponents have actually beat some of the other TRC schools. So right now, you know, without us wrestling anyone at this time, this is actually the the one of the premier matchups for the team of conference or, or the race in conference.
Gideon has got a tight half Nelson in on Steven. He's he's arching, trying to get out. Either way, if, uh, he gets the fall. Smart move on Gideon. He, if, if he did not pin him and he rolled back over, he would have got the technical fall and scored five points for his team. However, he got the fall at that point, scoring six points for the team. Up next at 113, we have our first senior of the night for Rochester, Cole Dowd. Cole is returning at 113 from last year, wrestling the same weight, which is very hard to do, but not growing. So Cole is actually wrestling Casey Deerdorf, who comes in with a record of three and two. And Cole's record is actually five and zero oh at this point. And the match begins after the statisticians are running a brand new scoreboard that we have this year. Uh, it will actually be able to show the score and the time online when we have uh, tournaments and host tournaments of that nature. So people who aren't able, may be able to make the, the journey down to Rochester for a, a long day's tournament, they can actually see it online. Nice little scramble, all the two wrestlers here. No points have scored. Oh, quick takedown for Cole. Now he's, he's breaking him down, trying to get into some patrol. And uh, Mr. Deerdorf uh, seems to want to keep moving, which is, is uh, what you want to do on bottom. You don't want to just hang down there. The more time you give your opponent on the top chance to throw the legs in, uh, work their offensive series that they want to work uh, is not good for you. So you try to continue to move and, and not allow your opponent to do that. Wrestlers go out of bounds, back to the center. North Miami is quick to their feet. However, they scramble to the out of bounds line and they have to start over in the center. Cole Dowd's looking to have a impressive senior season this year, working a lot in the off season and running cross country in the fall. So Cole came in in uh, pretty good shape before the start of the season. However, having two weeks break between matches, it, uh, uh, it, it something you have to work yourself back into, just one of those mental things that you gotta work yourself back into. Wrestlers scramble right on the edge of the mat and go out of bounds. Referee wants a fresh, clean start back in the center. Cole's able to start to stop his first move. However, the North Miami opponent is back to his base, working his way out. And they go back out of bounds again. North Miami wrestler is relentless on bottom, not, not getting discouraged and continue to try to get away. Cole's doing a good job keeping him in control. This is expending a lot of energy for both wrestlers. All while no points are being scored. Nice Gramby roll. Quick escape right at the end of the first period. The score is two to one after one. Mr. Dowd gets to choose, and he chooses to go down in the second period. <laughs> Choices after the first period alternate from the home team to the visiting team, and Rochester had first choice there in the, in the second period, and what that means is, which in this case was Cole, he got to choose to either start in the bottom position, in the top position, or he could choose to start in the neutral position and work for a takedown, or he could divert his choice to the third period. So Cole chose to go down and actually scored a reversal here, up four to one right now. Hey, 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 
Another escape by the North Miami opponent. Nice shot and defended by both. And a little drag by Cole scores another quick takedown. Is now up six to two. Casey tries another Gramby roll, but I almost got caught with his shoulders to the mat. Too long there. Works his way back out. A little less than a minute to go in the second period. Both wrestlers trying to improve their position. Casey had a nice little sit out, turn back in. Cole's riding tough, staying back on the hip, trying to drive him forward and break him down. Deerdorf's up to his feet, reaching in for a single. Cole's able to bring him back down to the mat. Seven seconds to left in the period. No escape this time to end the period. Cole is up six to two on Casey. Going into the third, this is North Miami's choice. And he chooses neutral. Rochester North Miami only had one JV match and that was at the heavyweight class and it was Rochester's Dan Clark losing in overtime to North Miami's Clayton Maynard, five to three in overtime. Casey tries to throw a headlock in desperation and, and does not able to convert with it. And Cole's able to score a takedown, moving him up eight to two. Here's where match strategy comes in on a wrestler. If he has an internal score clock or scoreboard in his head, he knows that he's up by six points. And if he can score two more points and win by eight points, he would score a bonus point for his team. Instead of three points for the team, he would score four. Deerdorf gets away. Score is now eight to three, 37 seconds to go. Cole could get a takedown and put him to his back for some points or he could get two quick takedowns and, and get his eight point lead that he's looking for. Time's running short here. Nice shot, got a little extended, but recovered for North Miami. He's in, Cole's trying to defend here. He's got far side cradle locked up and he's got a cradle. He gives him two takedown, but he does not get any near fall count there. Cole wins 10 to three, which is a decision by seven points. So he scores three points for his team. After two matches, North Miami is up six to three. Coming up. At 120, from North Miami is Wyatt Dyson with a eight and four record, wrestling newcomer to Rochester, Diego Newcomb. Diego is a sophomore, but did not wrestle last year for Rochester, and is uh, filling in for Aaron Orr, who has bumped up a weight class for tonight. Diego is not a newcomer to the sport. He did wrestle in Warsaw, where he went to middle school and has since moved to Rochester, so he has um, decided to try wrestling once again. He had a, a fairly successful career in middle school. He's trying to see if he can not extend that into uh, the high school level here, even at the varsity action. He was in on a cradle, trying to, cu trying to cut the corner here to, and lock up a cradle, and he gets it locked up, has his opponent on the back. 
Looks pretty tight. Wyatt's, Wyatt's kicking out, out of trouble for now, but he's still got the cradle locked up. In case any of you do not know, this is Chad Morgan. I am representing Channel 4 on our first live broadcast for wrestling ever here at Rochester. Got a tight cradle locked up. Doesn't have a lot of places to go here. Keeps rocking, trying to keep his shoulders off the mat for a two count. He's very close, and he got it. He got the fall with a minute 30 or minute 25 into the first period. Good first win for Diego, and he's undefeated in his high school career at 1 0. Rochester now takes the team lead with a score of 9 to 6. Going in to the 126 pound weight class, you have Wyatt Fletcher of North Miami, and his record is 6 and 4, and he's going against. Aaron Orr, a junior from Rochester, who normally wrestles 120 weight class, but has bumped up just for tonight. And he is three and two currently on this season. Aaron was in on a single leg, lifts it and, and gets the opponent down to the mat for a two point takedown. Aaron was working a hammerlock, keeping it flat across the back or it becomes potentially dangerous and they have to stop wrestling and start over. It looks like he now has a chicken wing in. He's now running it. He's trying to put his shoulder in his ear. He's got him over. He's getting a count. Looks like he's got it locked up pretty tight. Thirty-five seconds to go in this first period, and that's a long time to fight off your back in that position. Aaron, if he could, his arms aren't as long for this bigger weight class, but if he could sit through this and sit to his butt, there he goes. Now he's sitting through. If he can sit all the way through, he will force this near shoulder to him down to the mat and won't leave much anything for the North Miami opponent. He's torquing on that arm pretty tight right now. Five seconds to go. Way to fight off your back, North Miami. There's a three point near fall. Aaron goes up five to nothing. Going into the second period. Rochester wanted to go down, but coach tells him to go neutral, so he changes his mind. Good play on his part. Aaron was a regional qualifier last year for Rochester at the 120 pound weight class, hoping to better that and, and possibly get to semi-state this year. Aaron tries to work for the outside single. He had a little front headlock, shucks him by, swings around for a single, or I mean, I'm sorry, a takedown, not a single. He's got the chicken wing locked up again, looking to put Opponent back on his back again. And he's there, we're getting a count from the referee. Mr. Doan, the referee, is actually a coach, used to coach, and has since retired from Caston School Corporation. He's now chosen to throw his hat into the wrestling, refereeing game, which he's done for quite some time now. Got another three count, or another three point near fall, five count. 
And now he's got him back on his back again. He's up 10 to nothing and gets the fall with a 45 seconds to go in the second period. Puts Rochester up 15 to six after the 126 pound weight class. We now have our second senior of the night, John Hunting, state qualifier from last year at the 126 pound weight class, coming in tonight with a four and one record wrestling William Mikesell, another senior with a 11 and one record. Both wrestlers are very accomplished wrestlers. Um, Mr. Mikesell qualified for semi-state last year and uh, at the same, both of them at 126. And they did wrestle two times last year, John getting the better of Mr. Mikesell both times. So they're gonna start this year's series of matches. We do see North Miami again at our local John McKee Memorial um, on the 23rd of December. And then we will see them again and possibly get to wrestle. We don't necessarily wrestle them, but they will be at our Super 8. And then the following weekend, they will, they're will they in our conference tournament. And then the only other chance, the time we would see them would be down at the individual state finals. So these two are not strangers. They've wrestled quite a few times. John's got an underhook in and a front head now. Should be a pretty st strategic match here. John is last year's Three Rivers Conference champ at 126, and he's also been a runner-up twice. So he's been runner-up at 113, runner-up at 126 as a sophomore, and then a champ as a junior. And Mr. Mikesell was actually the runner-up last year, 126, losing to John. Wrestler scrambled out of bounds, looking like the Rochester opponent had the advantage. However, he did not get it. He got in on a low single real quick off the whistle to get a two takedown. Nice little ankle pick. John now has a chicken wing in on the near side and he's looking to, he's actually got it pretty deep across his back and he's got a tight waist in pretty tight. He's trying to take a big step over. Once he get past that certain point, the wrestler will go right over it. Now John throws a far side half. He needs to keep the chicken wing on the far side. Oh, he loses the half. Then he needed a jump side to be on the same side as the half, which he's now there. He's just got an arm bar, which is just as effective. Quickly jumps to the other side and sees if he can get that shoulder turned. And he, it looks like he may get it here. He does. And he's got this side, the far wrist, runs out of time. He got a two count and got a two point near fall increasing his lead four to nothing. So Mr. Mikesell gets first choice. He chooses to defer to the third period and John chooses to go down. Caution, misinterpreted or, or jumped the whistle I should say. And uh, you get a caution. In wrestling, you get two cautions, and if it, you get a third caution, you actually get a team, not a team point, a individual point taken away from you. And it, you also, if it happens again, you would get a second point taken away. The third penalty would be a two-point uh, deduction, and then the fourth penalty is that automatic disqualification from the match. John gets a nice little scramble there off the whistle and gets a quick reversal. John is currently ranked in the top 20 at the 132 pound weight class this year in the entire state. John actually made the, the cut down to 126 pounds for our first duel two weeks ago. And uh, it, it looked to, to put a lot of strain on his body and his mind, so he decided to go up a weight class, see how the season progresses and see what goes on, and he may, may go back down to 126 for the uh, state series and even before conference and, and our uh, um, coaches duel tournament that, that we're going to go. Um, and I explained that a little bit earlier. Oh, John has him on the back and got a fall. So with that fall, that puts Rochester up 21 to six, going into the 138 pound weight class. 
I'll explain more on the, the uh, state duels competition here in a moment. Up next is Josh Heckathorn, a junior from Rochester who was a semi-state qualifier two years ago at the 106 pound weight class. Josh was also, he's a two-time Three Rivers Conference champ at 106 pounds as a freshman, 113 as a sophomore, with a current record of 5-0 and this year. And he is wrestling Tyler Sivitz. Tyler comes in with a 2-9 and nine record. So the coaches' duels that we're going to in Muncie is uh, it's an invite-only tournament, and you have to clear your schedule for that said year that you qualify for. And um, Rochester's going, and there are three classes, which obviously the smaller third of your schools will be in the single A, then the 2A, which is where Rochester falls, and then the 3A is your larger schools. Rochester was in, is in the 2A, um, hoping to do very well at this tournament. Josh has got a quick takedown, a couple sets of turns, and a quick fall in the match, getting a fall in, in 40 seconds. Increasing Rochester's team score lead from 21 to 27 to 6. Up next, our third senior, Justin Schroeder, wrestling 145, making the jump from 132 last year, gets a forfeit. Uh, North Miami has a series of forfeits here um, coming up. Uh, they, they, the flu bug has hit them pretty hard this week. They normally would have a full roster uh, to wrestle in this duel, but, but the flu bug hit pretty hard. They actually had a couple boys leave school during the day. It was that bad. So, so we're not seeing them at full strength today. Um, but either way, the kids that are still healthy get a good match, and, and it's good to see Rochester back on the mat after a couple weeks off. So up next, we've got the junior Otto Sherbundy into the lineup, wrestling two weeks ago at the 170-pound weight class, and uh, it has dropped down to 152. He was making the cut but could not get down that soon due to uh, the uh, weight loss requirements that, of what you can lose during the season. Currently, Otto has a 4-1 record. That is um, his first real varsity action as a junior. And uh, he has a takedown and is getting near fall as, as I speak. And Otto is wrestling Dalton Wentz from North Miami, and he has a record of 2-5. and five. Otto is a boy that has made a commitment to wrestling, and when he came in at, from middle school, weighed over 180 pounds, and, and actually even higher, but I don't know the exact weight, and has, has continued to work out hard and uh, make this a priority to him, and, and you can tell as, as Otto's in very good shape. Otto is working a, a nice, tight waist in which it doesn't look like he's doing much when he's there, when he has the tight waist in, but what it's doing is it's constricting the, the error of your opponent and thus making him tired quicker. He's got the hammer lock across the back. He's got to keep it flat across the back or, or he'll call it. So he's walking it slowly. He's trying to pop his shoulder up in here and then he will lower down and reposition. And he runs out of time in the first period. Otto is up five to nothing. Otto has choice here and just goes neutral. Another takedown for Otto, and he's got his opponent. He's getting near fall count. Now he, he lets him roll over, or the opponent rolls over. He didn't let him roll over. And he gets a three, three point near fall, increases his score to 10 to nothing. Now he's got, he's working one on one, is what we call it, our arm bars. And he's looking to, uh, now he's worked into a cross face. Working it into a bundle. Gonna continue to walk around the head with that tight bundle. And the opponent's shoulders are now exposed at a 45, or they were. Now, no, no count yet from the referee. He had a one count earlier. There's one. 
Otto's got his five count, but he's going to look for more. And it, he still keeps the, the cross face. So he, he has not released. Now he releases that pinning combination, and he gets three more near fall. He's up 13 to nothing. Now he's got a chicken wing put in and a far side arm bar. Just walks around the head, and the shoulders are exposed again. He's getting the count. And here's where Matt's strategy comes in. He will have the technical fall at this point if he lets him roll through, but he's going to try to work for the pin to get that one extra bonus point for his team. Looks like he's got him squared on the mat, and he gets the fall. Very decisive victory for Otto. So up next we have Garrett Shane, another senior for Rochester, going against Caleb McConaughey from North Miami. Very similar records to both for both of these wrestlers. The main difference is Garrett's a senior, and I believe Caleb is a freshman. Garrett's in on a single, trying to dump it off to the side, and he gets gets him over and gets his takedown. Rochester is now up 39 to 6 as a team. Rochester's looking pretty good for having two weeks off, and North Miami's been wrestling. They wrestled last Saturday, their five duels. Um, I was a little worried coming into today's match to see how Rochester would respond having that much time off in between matches, but they look just fine as. Garrett here is looking for the fall, not just near fall points. He's got the shoulders down, and he gets the fall with a minute to go in the first period. Nice win for Garrett. Puts Rochester up 45 to 6. Now we move to the 170-pound weight class, and it's Adam Basham, senior, receiving a forfeit. Adam is 4-1 and one this year. Adam had a season-ending knee injury last year. As you can see on his left leg, he's got a big brace at the uh, John McKee Memorial and uh, did not get to wrestle anymore. And But he's back healthy this year and looking good at 5-1. And, and just as you saw right there at 182, Matt Wooten got his first varsity victory by forfeit. And Matt is also a senior coming out, um, learning the sport of wrestling to get him more prepared, he is leaving for the military after he graduates high school. Next up, this is going real quick here. Next up at 195, we have Wes Beck from Rochester, who is also a two-time, I'm sorry, he is a three-time conference champion. And this senior season, he's looking to become one of the very few four-timers in, in the conference. And he is going against Caleb Staker from North Miami. Wes is in on a nice single leg and takes him down. Wes is also highly ranked in our semi-state region, which uh, he, he boasts the number one ranking for the 195-pound weight class. However, he is ranked 10th in the entire state of Indiana. Wes has one blemish on his record this year already, and uh, his very first match of the season was against number two state-ranked um, opponent from Garrett High School, who Wes immediately took down quickly in that match, but uh, got caught in a headlock and and uh, could not fight off his back. But uh, you know, we get, we don't get caught in those big moves, and I think we wrestle with that kid and just anyone else at the in the state. So Wes quickly rolls this guy over and gets a quick pin from the referee. Wes has big aspirations of being a state qualifier this year and uh, we're hoping that he does the same. Lane Coffin, another senior for Rochester, coming in, making the transition from heavyweight down to 220 as our 220 from last year has bumped up to heavyweight. So they just flip-flopped in the, in the lineup this year and uh, Lane is wrestling Kurt Peoples from North Miami. Lane was not any bigger than 220 last year, but he could not beat our, our heavyweight now. 
last year for the 220 spot. So Wayne Lane's at a lot more comfortable weight with a nice takedown and a hard scramble from North Miami. And he does get out of it. However, Lane's still in on the single, dumps him back to the mat. And he's got a half Nelson in. He's right on the edge of the mat, so he's got to be careful not for him to go out. And they go out of bounds. Referees counting, and, and he gives two sets of different near fall. He gets two three-point near falls. So what happened there in that flurry of movement is Lane had the opponent on his back for a five count. He rolled off his back. He did it again and got another five count in a different pinning combination. There's a, there, there's a big key there is you can't have the same pinning combination. Expose your opponent's back to the mat roll them back over and still have the same move and then roll them back. Referees know, know when you switch to a different offensive pinning combination. So Lane was able to do that. Now lets him up and he's up eight to one early in this first period. The Zebras are traveling to Logan Sport to wrestle five dual matches this weekend with Logan Sport, Benton Central, Delphi, Culver Academies, who's a sectional opponent, and Delphi, and, and I'm sorry, not Delphi, I already mentioned them. It's Peru, and Peru looks to be our biggest matchup of the day. Um, looking on paper, however, that, that may change once we get there with other teams, or, and it depends on how which Rochester team shows up to wrestle. But if you're not doing anything on a Saturday and want to make the half an hour trip down to Logan Sport, that's where we'll be. We would love to have you there. And that's how they finish the first period, eight to one. Lane was a regional qualifier last year at the heavyweight class. Hoping to do the same, if not more this year, at the 220 pound weight class. He's got him to his back, looking like he, and he gets the fall. Very quick in the second period, 12 seconds into the second period, Lane gets a fall. Last match of the night here at heavyweight, maybe the most anticipated match of the night next to the 132 pound weight class. You have Jordan Schaefer, semi-state qualifier, senior, 5-0, who wrestled 220 last year, making the bump up to heavyweight, against North Miami's Evan Beach, who is also a semi-state qualifier with a 12-0 record this year. Evan is a two-time runner-up at 285 pounds at the, at the conference level, and Jordan was a TRC champ last year at 220. Jordan was in on a single leg, as, but they ran out of bounds. This is a great early season matchup for both of these young wrestlers. Young to me, that is. They are seniors, so they would be the older of the group here. Rochester now has a 69 to six lead. Fairly dominating uh, score tonight due to sicknesses. And um, we would like to think that the uh, outcome would still be the same here for the Rochester fans. I know North Miami would, would think differently. Rochester had one starting member out of the lineup today, and that was freshman Devin Bandow at 106 pounds. He uh, got a very mild concussion during practice during this week and, and has to sit out for precautionary reasons. It'd be nice to get him back in the lineup and get him a little bit more experience. 
Wrestlers are locked up, working the edge of the mat to see what we can do. Looking like we possible throw here. Wrestlers go out of bounds. Two big fellas right here, not, not the ones you want to try to stop when they're coming off the mat. People in the front row probably were uh, getting a little bit scared down there when they start working their way, as they are now. They both seem to be very comfortable working the edge of the mat. Nice shot on the outside as the period runs out as well. We're going to the second period. Score is 0-0. Zero to zero. Jordan had choice, wanted to defer. However, in a 0-0 zero to zero score, you want to score first in case you go into overtime because there becomes a chance where you would actually have a choice for a sudden death victory. So scoring first is very important in a wrestling match. We prefer it to be a takedown in the first period. However, if you can score an escape here, as Jordan just did, he's now scored the first points of the match. Jordan's up one to nothing on Evan. Jordan a little slow to get up. Maybe got his bell rung a little bit. Had to knock the cobwebs out a little bit. Knock the rust off, that's what we like to say. A lot of good hand control, a lot of bumping going on. Neither wrestler seems to be too hesitant. There is, there is, even though there's not many points scored, there's, there's quite a bit of action going on here for these heavyweights. Working the edge, he's, he's got him jacked up, looking for the single, ran out of bounds. Prior to our varsity action, we introduced our 83 strong kindergarten through fifth grade elementary group. Um, had, uh, had good numbers this year for our clinic. If, if you're interested in watching the, the little elementary wrestlers, you could come in next Tuesday and, and see some wrestling. Referee calls one point on for unsportsmanlike for one of these wrestlers. They started pushing there a little bit at the blowing of the whistle there. And it, and it does not go against the individual match. It does go against the team. So he took it away from North Miami. The, they got a little bit too, uh, little bit too out of control there at the end of the, the series of wrestling there. And he wants to keep it in control. Back to our elementary kids. Wabash is coming in town next Tuesday night here in Rochester in the auxiliary gym at 6.30. Coming to see how our boys, young boys, have advanced in, in uh, their training here for the past six to eight weeks here at Rochester. So if you want to see some youth elementary style wrestling, it's a lot of fun. And, and just uh, come on in. It's a free, free of charge, and, and we'd like to have you out. Referee calls warning on Rochester. They do like to work the edge of the mat, and but when you're there, you are could be caught for some stalling. As we run out of time here in the second period, Jordan is still up, one to nothing. Not a comfortable me lead by any means. Mr. Beach chooses to go down here thinking he can get away from Jordan here on the bottom. He's working to tripod up. Jordan is able to break him down right here. He's got a nice, nice arm bar. Let's go of that. Goes, tries to work a cross face here. Now he breaks, pops his hips up and comes right to his feet, trying to, trying to knife through to get free, and they work his way out of bounds. And there we go. Score is tied up. North Miami wrestler stands up, tries to get away. Referee says Jordan pushes him out of bounds, which is stalling in wrestling today. Evens the score up one to one. 
Beach is quickly to his feet and out. Now, Mr. Beach has a two to one lead as they come in doing some collar tie. Gonna have some heavy hands here. Little scramble to the uh, out of bounds line and little attempt there and as they go out of bounds and looks like Jordan was into a uh, bad position. They go back to the center on their feet. Rochester is down by one point. Nice throw to a, a dump and gets his one point back for North Miami Stalin. Great intense match, 49 seconds to go. We're all tied up, two to two. Both wrestlers have heavy hands when they come in to engage after the whistle's blown. Another shot attempt by Rochester. And out of bounds, back to the center. Big guys don't have a lot of them. Even though the mat's the same size as the small guys, they just don't have as much room to move. Wrestlers are still tied up. Jordan tries to throw by. He's got a good position. He's got to take him down to the mat. Jordan was in, but they called him out of bounds. And they're back at it again. 15 seconds to go. Wrestler doesn't get a takedown here. We go into overtime for the final match of the night. Time runs out. Okay, we got a one minute overtime. First takedown wins. Evan was there, thought he had some a type of a throw. Jordan reaches for the single, doesn't get it. His toes are in. He gives a takedown. Mr. Beach tries to go for a throw, but Jordan's able to keep his feet in bounds. Referee calls for the, or the, I'm sorry, the coach calls for the referee over once an explanation. Jordan was able to keep his toes in bounds. Whatever calls made, half of the people in the stands are not going to be happy. Wrestlers are ready to go. The match is actually over. North Miami's trying to get, trying to plead their case and possibly get the call overturned to continue on wrestling. Both of them are standing on the line like they want to keep wrestling. And he sticks with his call. Jordan wins in overtime. That won't be the last time these two young men wrestle. We'll see this match at least two more times this year. Great match of wrestling. Rochester ends up winning the duel 72 to 5. Thanks for watching.